sinners, go thou to our newest domain of nitpick delights and behold commercial sins. <laughs> oh, and subscribe immediately. So the order goes click, sub. Simple as that. Oh, f actually watch the video. Jesus, I guess I need to make a flowchart. Commercial sins, go now. Forty-one seconds of logos. Also, bending the very fabric of dice and space for the sake of your logo. This M has now turned into a four, and this five is now an A, which gives this die a total of eight sides and me a headache. Do you remember why King Arthur and his knights had a round table? No, but I'm guessing the intent wasn't to be immortalized as a lazy metaphor by a thousand franchises, or at least up until it was truly bastardized by the Michael Bay bots. Lie down to the back. Is Shula under the impression that the carriage is bulletproof? I mean, they're people of privilege, so maybe it is, but I'm still sinning Shola for leaving young Conrad back here to fend for himself if any sniper bullets come his way. Go back to Conrad. Yes, run straight toward where the bullets are firing from, and without any cover. If you're so keen to teach Conrad life lessons by using the tales of King Arthur, maybe you should invest in some actual fucking armor before making boneheaded decisions such as this. Protect our son. Character stays alive long enough to share their dying wish cliche. I'm very much looking forward to my first solo flight. I remember what happened to Icarus, Conrad. No, but I'm guessing the intent wasn't to be immortalized as a lazy metaphor by a thousand franchises. Or at least up until it was truly bastardized by Marvel's Eternals. Electricity might be quite the novelty at the turn of the century, but that is still no excuse for all these lamps. Especially in the middle of the damn day. Especially these double-barrel f***ers. Once again, you've turned down Cousin Felix's invitation for Conrad to stay with him in Russia. And how do you know that? Okay, we don't know that she's part of a network of spying servants yet, but Pa Voldemort over here certainly does, so why does Polly having this information surprise him? You haven't even offered me a drink. Gemma Atterton is not scolding me for not making her a drink in this scene. Fear is natural. The problem is, the more you fear something, the more likely it is to come true. Holy sh! is that how fear works? Okay, what's the quickest way to develop an entirely healthy phobia of having a deep and meaningful friendship with Andrew Garfield? Can you fight with only one arm? Oh, yes. If I had someone left to fight. Shola might have grazed Conrad's stomach here, but there is nowhere in this fight where he comes close to making the two red marks on Conrad's back. <laughs> Cheese and biscuits. They were fighting with fake blades and paint, but Polly just rolls in and shoots at them with an actual fucking gun. If Oxford wants to keep Conrad out of danger, he should probably start by firing Mary Poppin Offens over here. I wish your mother could see you now. In a men's changing room? We are Oxfords, not rogues. Conrad just said he might want a different suit not to go rob banks and burn villages. It might be true, but not every moment calls for an our ancestors were horribly racist and vile people speech. Way to poo-poo the nice occasion, Orlando. Conrad. You're going to need that shooting suit after all. What was it about this meeting with Tywin that convinced Rafe of Fiennes to involve Conrad? The whole point is to keep him out of harm's way. And isn't that best achieved by keeping him as far from a suspected assassination plot as possible? I have a Faberge egg made especially for you. This accent. Welcome class to Conversation Starters for Movies 101. Lesson 1! You're late. Congrats, class. You've all passed. Also, are you f***ing surprised? You live in the middle of nowhere on Suda Pandora, where the only means of egress and ingress are this janky-ass one-person lift. What is trust? Hmm? And so begins two hours of the vague Scotsman, a part of the story that is so weak and distracting, I'm just going to tell you now that it's Morton. Yep. This dude. Now you might be saying, Jeremy, I haven't seen the movie. Well, I have no idea why this matters. Don't worry, folks. I've seen it twice and feel exactly the same way. Yes, we are evil, and you can tell as such by the banging of our fists. Look upon us with fear as we beat this table into servitude under the weight of our evilness. Does that make sense to you, Ferdinand? Did Princip seriously wait until Ferdinand was already here to finish assembling the bomb? <laughs> I guess he didn't have a lot of better options, but it still seems f***ing brutal to launch this bomb directly at these poor bastards back here. But the truth is, you're just a boy who has no idea what men are capable of. What, watching my mother die wasn't a good enough introduction? Conrad would be brutal at cinema sense. You see, years ago there were three young cousins. Oxford Exposition. Oxford Edition? ex box Ford Edition? Someone on set said that Kenneth Branagh's Poirot has the craziest mustache ever captured on film, and discount Mark McKinney said, we'll see about that. But they're cousins. Identical cousins all the way. Choosing to eat eggs when donuts are available. The object of war is not to die for one's country, but to make the enemy die for theirs. My middle school PE teacher's speech at the beginning of every game of dodgeball somehow makes its way into the script. The English monarchy has oppressed 
my beloved Scotland for over 700 years. So the plan here is to set all of Europe at war with each other with the end goal of Germany beating England into defeat. But if in 700 years you haven't managed to overthrow English rule, what makes you think you'll have a better chance under the Germans? Also, throughout the course of this movie, he's able to manipulate just about every major and minor power in the world to do basically anything he wants, but it never occurred to him to use the same methods to just trick England into giving Scotland independence? When I was young... Good God, this movie is at least 17% flashbacks, and it's already a prequel. Are flashbacks in a prequel... prequels within prequels? Is this the prequel of a prequel? Where does it end? Why does every movie have to be part of a carefully constructed film universe with prequels and sequels and reboots and requels? Why am I Dr. Seussing this sin? Does that make this a sin dependent on IP? And is this sin a prequel? of another sin? Does this mean Spielberg's West Side Story is good? I have so many questions. Every man I killed, I killed a piece of myself. Skip! This is nonsense. Acting this calmly when your son appears to be fighting for his life right in front of you. Your incessant need to protect me will not redeem your own failure to protect mother. Kids! Also, this will they or won't they eventually join the fight bullshit is going on for all the sometime. And we know that eventually they will join the fight because we've seen a movie before. Shouldn't the key to your secret spy cave be a little more complicated to figure out? Like a secret book you pull out or a clever tune on the piano? I just think this should be a little more Batman and a little less Scooby-Doo. Movie takes 38 minutes, 41 seconds, and an entire semester of European history classes to actually Kingsman. This war has made me realize that we cannot rely on politicians to do their job properly. True, but is it really any better to leave it in the hands of the vigilantes with no accountability to serve as police, judge, and executioner? My reputation is of a man not wanting to be involved, which means that my character finds it much easier to be involved unnoticed. Hey, that actually makes sense. See, my reputation is of a man who likes to sin movies, which means my character of being a movie lover goes unnoticed. And I shall now sin this movie that I quite like for providing me with that unwelcome existential crisis. While British intelligence listens at keyholes, our people are actually in the room. He's got a maid in the room where it happens, the room where it happens, the room where it happens. Also, this is a pretty clever idea, but what's in it for the domestic staff? The warm, fuzzy feeling of a job well done and another chance to serve king and country? Sure, Shola and Polly are well looked after, but if the network is so large, wouldn't there be some disgruntled domestics that are fed up with the rich and would happily see them fall? Ah, and a secret compartment that smelt of almonds, therefore... Marzipan! Yay! Cyanide. Oh... Princip's ring proves he was not acting alone. Oh, no, it f***ing doesn't. It proves that he had a fancy ring with a suicide pill in it. This by no means proves that he wasn't working alone. But of course, it will because movies never actually want to make these detective stories even the slightest bit detective -y. Your cousin's letter made us extend our network to Russia. Jumping Jehoshaphat, how long ago did Conrad get that letter? It certainly doesn't feel long enough ago for them to have been able to extend their network of secret server spies into the most important family in Russia and to have found this tiny, tiny ring and to have invented cell phone technology to have communicated this back to England so quickly. The Tsar's nanny found a ring in Rasputin's chambers. Why would Rasputin ever let this ring leave his sight? It's one of the few things that could connect him back to the lying Scotsman, right? With Russia out of the war, England is doomed. Imagine there being a time when a country needed Russia to be in a war to come out on top. Fortune doodling! The only way to honor the vow I made to your mother is to break the vow I made to myself. First of all, f*** you, dude. Where was your vow of pacifism when you were kicking the poppycocks out of these poor guards earlier? Secondly, the vow you made to your wife was... Never let him see war again. And that ship has certainly sailed. In fact, including Conrad in any of these shenanigans is breaking your other vow, which was to... Protect him from this world. Conrad will entice Rasputin to a private dessert in the summer room. How is this keeping Conrad out of danger? At least if you let him join the army, he would have received combat and survival training. This asshole is sending him into a private room with one of the most dangerous men in Russia with nothing more than a gun he's never shot and an overly almondy Bakewell tart. Why don't you glide over there and get me a f***ing drink? I love Fines, but his character in this movie is so reminiscent of his performance as John Steed that this movie makes me think of the Avengers, and I hate thinking about that movie. And no, not that Avengers, the other Avengers. But I kind of also hate being reminded of that Avengers as well. Too sensitive. We like to f like tigers. Ten sins for forcing me to add how often do tigers have sex to my browser history. And yes, it's a lot. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say your son was trying to f me. Well, more likely, you were trying to f him. Undercover or not, having this kind of conversation about your own son is a sin. Whatever the f this, this, and this is about. Also, I never ever need to see vomiting in movies. Insides should stay on the inside, people. <laughs> come to me, come to me. 
If Conrad and Shola could hear Rasputin chanting a few seconds ago, then they would have most definitely heard Rasputin screaming at Orlando. So why are they not coming to help Orlando yet? This was either a sh plan or it's a sh execution, but either way, it's a sin. If you really knew my reputation, you'd know I'd take a little poison for breakfast to keep myself immune. That's not how poisons work. Also, what if someone tries to poison him with something other than cyanide? Is he taking a cocktail of poisons every morning? This movie is better than it has any right to be. And in scenes like this fight sequence, we can see the charm this installment in the Kingsman series possesses. Why couldn't this have been the second film in the franchise? Also, if Kirk Cockings, I mean Connors, was given this much personality in The Amazing Spider-Man, we may have had a more watchable movie. That doesn't really have anything to do with what's going on here, but it has given you a chance to watch this awesome fight scene and also another chance to sin The Amazing Spider-Man. Why shoot the f***ing sword? If the goal is to disarm him, shooting him in the head will likely be just as effective and far easier. I can obviously buy that the stab in his shoulder didn't kill Rasputin, but I'm not buying that he wouldn't be able to use that arm as freely as he does here. None of the other guests walk past this room or hear any of this very loud tussle or Conrad and Polly's gunshots. I know stealth is always preferred, but if there are zero consequences, you have to wonder why they bothered with the elaborate plan to begin with. This cake is not in my stomach. Today, you proved yourself a man. I guess nothing says you're a man, my son, like failing to seduce a Russian priest, failing to shoot a Russian priest, and failing to stab a Russian priest. A toast to our successful mission and my new leg. This worked. There are no rules in war. We're a couple decades shy of the Geneva Conventions at this point, but the Hague Conventions were the closest equivalent and had been around since 1907. So yes, there most certainly were rules in war. Tea? Please. British are always drinking tea cliche. This code is what the Kaiser has been using. This movie took almost 40 minutes before it even started Kingsmaning, but now it's going to just zip right through this bit where they're trying to break an important code. Why couldn't we have gotten less Conrad? You can't be a soldier bull sh and more of the intriguing storylines like this one. Although, at least they've given us this really fascinating father-son dynamic that I'm sure will result in more intriguing adventures between them in future installments. It's not like they'll let Conrad go to war and get himself killed impersonating another officer. I'm glad that never happens. Is the eight a Z or is it an R? Saying Z instead of Z. I've cracked the code. I'm sorry, but waiting until you record someone giving away elements of the code because they can't remember it and need the cheat sheet doesn't really feel like cracking the code. Do you think we can extend our network to the White House? Most of their household staff were trained in England, so it shouldn't be a problem. Then why haven't they already done this? I enclose a poem, which I thought you might appreciate. Bent double. I know we're not going for historical accuracy here, but there is something kind of icky about rewriting the origin of one of the most profound poems ever written. Unless the movie is saying that Conrad somehow found himself at an Edinburgh war hospital on his way to the front line where he bumped into Wilfred Owen mid-draft. This war never stopped surprising me. A German waving a Union Jack! <clears throat> Union flag! You will accompany me to retrieve what's left of him as soon as it's dark. Well, it, why the f didn't he wait until it's dark to make his run? For some reason, the captain here decides that Conrad is worth risking anyone who was left alive and the mission for, but none of the other poor bastards that he could have equally saved. Not a single one of these shots hits Conrad. Same side. Oh, piff and tosh did this loose arse not stop the bleeding from a severed leg. He's been sat here for hours at this point. He should be dead, or at least delirious beyond all comprehension. Come over here and help me out. I'm, I'm freezing. Freezing? You lost your bloody leg, man. Unless Conrad is about to reveal he's the first male output of Thelma the Snobnagar, waiting until sunrise to make his escape across no man's land is a dumb f***ing idea. This rips off 1917 for some time. Oh, f*** you, movie. Hi. Is that your best Scottish accent? Ah, don't I be thinking you're so canny to be judging Larry until you hear a real shocker of a Scottish brogue, you wee crabbit clipe. I'm not hard, you German spy. As much as this was a shocking moment and a welcome break from standard movieing, I have a couple of issues. Mainly, holy sh**, is this an extreme reaction from Archie's friend? Sure, something sketchy is going on, but how and why would the Germans steal the identity of a random Lance Corporal who has only been on the front line for a matter of hours? Secondly, this moment has considerably less impact when you realize it's pulling the same sh** the first movie did with Colin Firth. Your son was killed in action, son. You didn't f***ing leave with this? You let him read the damn poem and then break the news like this? And this asshole somehow ends up at the round table. America will not have to join the war. Conrad succeeded where we all failed. Such it up, governor. That ain't all bad. On guard. <laughs> Cheating. It's scotch time. Grieving man grows a beard and gets drunk cliche. For Conrad, a true hero. A man who knew his duty. Dude, did you learn nothing from the f***ing poem? Do you really think this logic is going to motivate Oxford to get back in the game? Kissing anyone who has been chasing scotch with scotch for the last few days slash weeks. I do not accept your resignation, but I will accept a very strong cup of tea. 
So is it the boner, the hungry Britons, or the dead son that convinces Oxford to save the world? Because I feel like it's the boner. Shaving, cologne, shoelace tying, redemption. And do we have someone in the embassy? Of course. And she suggests we make an unannounced visit at three o'clock. Is that all? Just turn up at three and you'll know? The entire war may depend on this and you're keeping it that vague. Listen, was the scarf reveal really necessary here? The maid clearly mentions 3 p.m. because she knows it's Mata that's blackmailing the president, so Oxford should really have all the information he needs. She filmed herself seducing the president. Honestly, I think the president deserves everything that's coming to him and more if he was seriously negligent enough to get a lap dance in the Oval Office and with the f***ing curtains wide open. Also, how did none of the White House staff or security think that a giant-ass camera from 1917 sat in the middle of the damn lawn and pointing directly into the Oval Office was at all suspicious? This is cashmere from the Camelero goat. It's very rare. Where does it come from? He just said it comes from the Camelero goat. Asked and answered, Orlando. Asked and answered. Also, this movie's big bad reveal and Orlando getting to the bottom of everything revolves solely around the coincidence that Mata Hari was wearing this scarf when she randomly ran into Orlando at the ambassador's office. The only place in the world where the Camelero goat breeds. Geo cashmering. Also, here's an idea. If you want to secretly take over the world from a secluded mountaintop, may I suggest not furnishing your hench people with cashmere scarves that can only be found in the region of said secluded mountaintop. Give the word, and their numbers will be reduced. If these guards are alerted, then I don't think we'll make it up. But this is exactly what Polly and Shola end up doing as soon as Oxford flies to the top. Why is 2 versus 6 preferable to 3 versus 6? This is called a parachute. Parachutes, while not as widely available till the 1910s, have been around in some form or another since the late 18th century. I'm guessing Shola and Polly, with all their spy connections, would have at least heard of a parachute. Tomorrow at dawn, I'll fly the plane over the mountain and Shola will jump out. It sounds like Oxford had this all mapped out. So why the f*** has he waited until the very last moment before explaining what the damn plan is to poor Polly and Shola? Also, if you have the ability to fly, I'm really struggling to understand why you need to take control of the lift. Why can't you all fly up there, land, and go in guns blazing, and then take control of the lift for your escape? Despite the plane veering massively off course and Oxford himself tumbling in free fall for quite some time, he will still end up relatively close to his intended target, which means he either originally got out of the plane far too early, or this movie doesn't give a shit about aerodynamics. I honestly don't care if this is realistic or not. The sequence is shot so well, I'm willing to give it a sin off. However, with that being said, this probably isn't realistic, and therefore Orlando survives this, no matter how awesome it is, my hands are tied. And just in case you thought the movie was throwing you a modicum of believability with this rough landing, just remember that he landed on the only segment that has this conveniently scalable ice sheet. This goat wanted to kill him and now wants to be friends with Orlando. Goats, how do they work? Did you see this? Discount Mel Gibson here just so happens to hold up the incriminating negatives right as Oxford is peeking in to locate said negatives. Also, getting the negative doesn't assure them that the Shepherd doesn't have other copies of the film lying around. Does he think he's hidden? He thinks he's hidden, doesn't he? There's no way that Oxford didn't see this giant of a man as he broke into this shack. And yet he is more worried about the guys on the outside who, by the way, could easily shoot at him through this wooden door, but inexplicably choose not to. There's the signal. Get to the lift. I'm still confused as to what this signal is supposed to mean. That Oxford has control of the top side of the lift? Because he most certainly does not. All this signal did was give the guards at the bottom advance warning that some shit is going down. Discount Andre the Giant inexplicably decides to take a full 30 seconds to walk from where he picks the gun up to even consider shooting it at he who must not be maimed. Shola, stop f***ing about! Get on that couch away! So what we're saying is that the plain part of this plan was complicated, risky, and entirely un necessary? Why couldn't they have taken out these six guards and used the counterweight to fly to the top? Especially considering that's exactly what they end up doing anyway. Also, if the goal is to find the tape isn't taking the lift out of the equation as soon as possible, the best course of action, it guarantees that the tape can't leave the mountaintop, right? And if it all goes tits up, you still have the plane as a backup plan. Polly is quick to act and doesn't seem to be concerned about murdering this guy. For all they know, he's a spy too, or being blackmailed by the shepherd, or all kinds of things that make him not okay to murder. There's a reason most movies don't show the decapitated heads, likely because they always look like Halloween masks. Polly, do you have the film? I have the negative in my hand, Your Grace. Polly doesn't answer this question by saying, I thought you said the bloody thing was up there, and how the f*** was I supposed to know you wanted me to pick it off that mangled yank that we just murdered? All these dickheads have just been standing outside, presumably wondering how the scary man managed to disappear behind the swingy wooden thingy. Despite clearly having the drop on Shola and Oxford, Downton Abbey will still fail to hit either of them with a single bullet from his f***ing automatic firearm. The Shepherd and most everyone in this movie clearly has attended the Stormtrooper school for aiming at things. Considering how many fun and exciting set pieces this movie has, it's kind of sad that the final sword fight isn't one of them. Ah! 
This movie has more goat ex machina than the Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. I shouldn't let you fall. Only now I have become the man that my son would have been. Yay? So, Shola, how are we going to get down from here? Polly is still at the bottom and can go get another plane or some sh Look here, discount Judy Dench. Leave the sinning to the pros. Mr. President, chef has made your favorite peanut butter cookies. Every second that America isn't in the war means hundreds, if not thousands, of deaths on the front line. And the blockade on England continues to starve the public, but I'm sure we've got time to f around and bake some cookies so that we can hide this tape of amateur softcore pornography. I am Lancelot. <laughs> what the f***? A random soldier that Conrad picked out because they're roughly the same height is somehow qualified to be part of a brand new secret service because what? He can deliver a f***ing letter? I am. Bedivere. And this prick helped keep America out of the war for months. He should be in prison, not at the f***ing round table. And long live the Kingsman. Based on the box office, I'm guessing not as long as they would hope. The Kingsman! Well, at least this isn't a f***ing hologram for once, but here are ten extra sins for those ridiculous holograms in the two other movies. And your name? Adolf Hitler. Wait, now, the movie is saying that 29-year-old Hitler was present at the abdication of Kaiser Wilhelm and murdered the remainder of the Romanovs? Why? We know that's not what happened. And if there's one person in all of history that doesn't require any additions to give their evilness more context, I think it's Adolf Hitler. We wanted to question him, not to kill him. You gonna say something clever? Go on, say something clever. You have to stay with me. Promise me you'll never remarry. And no sex either. I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. The English monarchy has oppressed my beloved Scotland for over 700 years. If it's no Scottish, it's crap! May God forgive me. You shot my battleship. Your name? My name is Khan.